cancel culture what? I'm going to take all your Louis C.K. DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put them in the oven for like a half an hour. Stick them in your ass slow like... <laughs> 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 The big black kid that crushes your whole block. Dow Jones, now stone, genuine short shot. Street smart, street heart, you never want none. Run. The beef starts, beef starts, and run them out. Run. Run. I don't get out with bitches and the crooked shady bitches that want to get. All right, big night, important night. Colonel Hector Bravado of Breakup Gaming Society here for, for the first time. You've heard him on the show before. The JK is here because I've been friends with him since 2007. Never saw his face before tonight. And also, the big black kid that crushes your whole block, a.k.a. Dow Jones, the guy who made my theme music and generously let me use it, is here. Yes, Welcome. sir. Salute. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. So, Break Up Gaming Society Simple. We're going to do a drink of the week. We're going to do a game of the week. And then a uh, track of the week. And this is cool because Dow Jones let me license that track for zero dollars. <laughs> We're going to play the entirety of one of my favorite Boom Bap tracks of all time. It's called Washy Ass by <laughs> Dow Jones and Dio the Fabulous Drifter. Here comes Drink of the Week. You're going to like it. Drink of the Week. Colonel Hector Bravado here after the fact, raising my hand and putting on my dunce cap because sometime during the editing of this show, I lost track of the week. Just in between snipping this drag and drop, delete that. I I deleted the damn track of the week file, which was a shame because while the JK is not a drinker, Dow Jones did join me in hoisting a glass of Corso, that's C-O-R-Z-O, Reposado tequila. And it was one of the just luckiest, hey, let's just grab something buys in recent memory. Of course, I was using the calculus of let's figure in for inflation and the fact that I'm in Denver and that if you generally spend between 40 and $50 on a fifth, you're at least going to have something drinkable. Came in, It comes in an attractive rectangular bottle with softened edges and a heavy cap, kind of look like an oversized perfume or cologne. And damn, was it good. Um, in the episode called First Transmission from Trinidad, I drank my way through a Huradura gift pack, which was hopefully both undignified and informative. And of course, on the very first episode, episode one, we featured what was then my go-to Reposado tequila, which was um, Espolón, which I used to get for a screaming good price at Costco. So we uncorked this uh, Corso Reposado, and I have to tell you, it drinks smooth and sweet. I enjoyed it. Dow, Dow enjoyed it. And here's a teaser for what's coming up. Based on, on that, last time I was in town, I splurged and upgraded. I have untouched because I've been under the weather lately. And I want to enjoy it to its fullest when I do open it. A bottle of Corso Añejo. I'm like, if, if the Reposado is that buttery, then the Añejo has got to be worth spending the extra few bucks, right? Doesn't feel like a gamble to me. You're going to hear more about it in a future episode. Anyway, we're going to do Game of the Week now in the laziest way possible. Game of the Week. Here's a couple realities about Game of the Week. One, um... You've heard his voice on my intro a million times. Dow Jones, a.k.a. the big black kid that crushes your whole block, is now the old black dad that goes to bed at 10 o'clock. 9.30. says <laughs> 9.30 sharp. Well, shit, you're 23 past. You're in trouble. So here's the deal. I have a game that I bought, have not played, called Battlelands. It was a cheap risk because um, it, was, it was a little tiny thing that cost... 10, 15 bucks or whatever. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to just hand the box to Dow and then JK, and they're going to step up to this mic and just review this game, knowing nothing more about this. 
Um, so this game looks like something that, you know, back in the day, if you saw that dude uh, sitting in the van on the corner that was trying to lure children, this would probably be in that van where he would say, hey, kids, come over here. Look at this Battlelands game. Yeah, Because it's got little pictures of like little, uh, you know, little characters, little like cute beat up characters and he's probably holding it right over his bare dick like hey do you like pulling? oh boy do you yeah. like do you like, uh, pull, do you like pull and peel twizzlers listen i'm not here talking about bare dicks okay i'm just <laughs> talking about battlelands all right i don't see any bare dicks on this so so uh dow how does how is the game of battlelands played knowing it's for pedos <laughs> It's not for pedos. Nothing is for pedos, okay? Or at least nothing that I <laughs> fucking have anything to do with whatsoever. No, but you said that this game would would be found in a pedo van. Probably. How do you play it? Um, so what you do is you find a dude named JK, and then you hand the bu- box to him. <laughs> and you'd be like, hey, what do you think of that? And then if he says it's cool, then you win. And if he says it's bullshit, then you just got to, like, Kill yourself. I don't know. What? what? <laughs> that, I, no, that's that's as good as most of the game reviews I read. JK, tell us how to play Battlelands. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I think what you do is you you get a little of that tequila that you uh-huh. you purchased. Um, a little. <laughs> um, you stay up for about seven nights, um, and then. You you basically stare at a Pokemon card for about <laughs> fucking I don't I don't know five hours straight. You just meditate on that shit, and uh, then you open this box and you realize there's really nothing inside except the darkness of your own soul. Really, <laughs> but I I, I should have read a review before I bought this shit. That's heavy. <laughs> that is heavy. So so just. In all seriousness, I have done some readings. Great improv, y'all. Um, so, Battlelands, these cute creatures on the cover all represent warring clans of creatures. Battlelands is a, a card game for three to five players that takes place in a universe where an apocalypse has made all the humans going away. Going away. And now sentient... Do you get in trouble for saying, like, pedo on a podcast? Only if you're saying stuff like pedo Bill Gates... <laughs> pedo Bill Clinton, pedo royal family. I think that shit is all true, though. Pedo Republican Party. Well, maybe not Bill Gates, but uh, he, he was on the Lolita true. Express. Oh shit! Well, all billionaires want access to nubile flesh. They're, they think they're pharaohs. It's the law. I, so I digress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I digress too. So uh, <laughs> here we go. So Battle Lands. Yeah, three to five players, and there are factions of uh, rodents, moles. Reptiles that are sentient, and what they have done is they have gone to war for in these. Th- the, only, the cute thing about it is, and this is cool. Look at this. They've basically assemb- they've assembled themselves into clans, and you have to manage and win with your clan. And uh, <laughs> they've rigged little weapons out of the tiny little stuff. There's a guy like the can opener with the sewer at. He's gonna fuck you up with that can opener. Wow. Yeah. Forms of sw- flies, roaches. Here's somebody who's a look at that. They've taken a kid's bike and turned it into a giant war machine. So all the li- okay. all the little tiny minutia of our world has become war engines to them, okay. and and they're fighting it out. That's Battlelands. That's as much as we know. We're gonna get to, be- uh, to track of the week. Why? Because it's fucking special. Here we go. Track of the. Get this barbershop quartet bullshit out of here. What the hell yeah, is this supposed to be a damn Geritol boy band you got going on here? Oh, wow. That is kind of stupid. Fucking Next. Garbage. Relax and take a seat. Oh, sit back and play the beats and blast it in your Jeep. It's the track of the week. I'm ratchet in the streets. Talk trash to the geeks. Get smacked in the beat. It's the track of the week. Um, usually we use snippets of songs and hoping that I get by with a fair use argument because we review them, but we don't have to do that today because while she asks, Dow Jones said I could use however I wanted on the show. So after we chat about it for a minute, we're going to play the whole thing. It's so liberating. I don't know. No, that's not a chubby. That was just, that was just, that, that, that was just a piece of my drawstring. So anyway, um, yeah, while she asks, one of my favorite boom, boom, bat, um, 
Dow, you can tell the story. You and D.O., mutual friend of ours, we love you, William, um, did it in an afternoon. So, th- yeah, this was just a joint where D.O. and I were, you know, chilling, you know, and the rest of the crew was, like, you know, doing whatever. Because it was still, Ground Zero Movement was still together at this point. But we, uh, you know, it was just a bottle of E&J, <laughs> you know, and, like, some Sports Center, And we were just kind of chilling and then, like, hey, you know, got the mic and everything. And we were talking about old school hip hop, you know, and how, like, what this was like 05 when we recorded this and and then we were still talking like old men like oh this this music today it's not like back in the day when we used to <laughs> I remember this cuz every time we talked about what we loved and you'd hear a name you didn't like you'd always do this you go man <laughs> right <laughs> yes that that was my response and that, that will still be my response and but anyway so uh tell you what <laughs> let's not over this is this is not puffery this is one of my favorite boom bap Sounds like where it came from. Bears, the energy of the day it was created. It's called Wash Ass by Dow Jones and Dio the Fabulous Drifter. Here's the whole fucking thing. Crushes your whole block. Dow Jones, milestone, genuine short shot. Street smart, street park, you never want none. Run. The beef starts, beef starts, and run them out. Run. Run. I don't get down with stitches and the crooked shady bitches that want to give you the stitches just to liquidate your riches. You <laughs> bitch, you better stop. You must have forgot about my rap. You're not a serious family You are an actor like Johnny Depp. They went from exponential potential to not being able to pay for the rental or even a bill from the dent on the house. That for your mental. I've been through hard times too. The situation's a man. I bring the hard rhymes through. That's why I'm hard times too. Half past despicable. Last man to bring it through fast rap to critical stack analytical slap slap. I'm hitting you smack smack. I'm sticking you smack lips to stack chips all with the lyrical technique for party crashes, liquor spilling mayhem. Punk cops to play them, super bitches to slay them. It's all serious biz, no time remains for the cattle defecation. You spitting, writing, and praying. What the? Get back, get that, bitch, I'm a rough neck. Get those back, hold the price of success. Do they suck? Yes. I think they better let it go. Side of your war, baby. Welcome to the murder show. It's the mister, fabulous drifter. Twisting your sister in the sea of a business. I don't need to spit 16 to split your crew. I hit the block, lean, spit two when you're through. Oh, you a gangster rapper? Only record I got is the one that's wrecking your block. So get off my jock, cause you know, and I know that my flow's terrific. So when they say it's hip hop, I'm what they meant, bitch. I kicked it. Yup, yup, I kicked it, come, come on. on You couldn't bang with this if your name was gang It's calm, I drop bombs Cooler than cutting hair I've been doing this since before the running man running. Dumping the gun in hand, blasting at the police Who the man that got your label scared to drop your release Copping the quarter piece, the beats bang out Just when you thought it was sweet, the beats came out Hitting the parking lot, hitting with the robot That's how we do when we hit him with the show shot <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I fuck with it. It sounds like, I mean, you guys could pass for New Yorkers. I mean, <laughs> it sounds like it could be a New York track. Well, uh, Dio was from Trenton. Okay, that that makes sense. He sound he sounded like he was from out there. But, they called uh, him Jurors, right? Yes, that was his nickname. You know, here, uh, um, he lives in Alabama now, ooh. I believe. Is this you or me? Fuck. But so he's down south. But you know, when he was here, we used to call him Jersey. Oh yeah, this is mine. 
What were you making music with back then, like as far as beats and shit? So I used an ASR 10. Okay. Um, and I used a, uh, I used Reason, but it was Reason 2.0. Uh-huh. It was <laughs> I think they're up to like Reason 15.0 now or something. I, I was, I was never good with Reason. I, I, I like the sounds in it, but. I don't think anybody was good with Reason. It just <laughs> does too much, you yeah. know? I need something simple where I, like, hit record and yeah, hit, yeah, yeah. hit the drum pads or whatever. I started with the MTV Music Generator 2 on my PlayStation 2. Oh, okay, uh, then, okay. Now, uh, wait then, a minute. Now, now, now wait a minute. Oh, this, <laughs> this seems to bear some discussion, so I'm the oldest person here. and I And I know there are a lot of... Weird DJ toys out there. What the fuck was that, JK? It was a Funk Master Flex endorsed video game. Um, it had like really? it had stems for a bunch of different songs. It had like it had a Dan the Automator song. It had a Nelly song. You could just take the sounds from it, just do whatever the fuck you wanted with it. That's Got how it. I learned how to make beats originally. I never. That's dope. Well, this is an interesting conversation for me, JK, because before today, as long as I've known you. As much as I know about you, I never knew that you laid down a beat. So, color me amazed. I mean, that was that was long ago. Probably like 2014 was the last time I made anything. But uh, yeah, I, I learned from that. Then I moved on to pirated versions of Fruity Loops. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> that, that's how Lex Luger did it. <laughs> uh, that's that's how a lot of people do it, and yeah. uh, they still do it with mm-hmm. with that. Is Fruity Loops still a thing? It's still a thing, it's but called. they call it FL Studio because they don't want to call it Fruity Loops, right? <laughs> Which yeah. is n- n- yeah. Now they call it Count. They call it uh, fucking Count Chocula Studio. <laughs> but but yeah, like I mean, that's how I learned, and I mean, shit, I wanted like I wanted like an MPC back then, but you know how it goes when you yes. are broke as fuck. Now is the MPC the the things I see on the videos with the, with the little pads? Where they yeah, have a sample like, and they're and they're like, and they're using their listen, hands to do the trigger the at, cymbals and hi hats and shit. If you're looking at like '90s hip hop, there I mean there was three different tools. You know, it was either the ASR10, the MPC, or the SP1200. That was it. Like there wasn't really anything else to make beats with that were legitimate back in the day. Now so, after that, we started to move into more of these programs like, you know, your Pro Tools. Reason was the one I was using. It was good uh, enough for Jizza to name a whole album after. You think they maybe they sponsored him? Psh, I don't know if they did, but they owe him a lot. Dude, zero. That album was dope, by z- the way. Zero percent finance. Yeah, that man. is clean. Yeah, the way they just take he just takes that single mu- guitar doom, 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 mm-hmm. and puts it through the whole song, and it's so the sound is so full and so clean. It works. But I'm drunk now though, so we gonna talk about it. So like <laughs> Jizza, Jizza, like. You know, his pen game is, like, undeniable. Like, he's, you know, is disgusting. But, you know, the live show, like, I saw him live in, uh, I think it was Fort Collins where I saw him live. And that shit is just boring because he's not, like, a, like an MC like that. He's gonna. He's a. Ly- he's a. He's a writer. He's and a writer like that, that will recite his. <laughs> right. His so lyrics. he's not gonna put on like the dope live show. But, and but the- when you listen to him and you drive in, like that is gonna be the like the best that you're gonna hear oh, as yeah. far as lyrics. They ain't had a hit since I seen Aunt Mabel. <laughs> nah, just a well. No, no, that that was on his lines. Right. Now their money's getting stuck to the gum under the table. So, you, you bringing them old lines. You got to bring some of the newer. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, speaking of newer, did see a tweet for him the other day. This is where I envy my Denver castmates tonight because I saw a tweet from Jizza saying him and uh, Ghost are coming here. I ain't going to see that. Listen, I've seen Wu-Tang enough times. I saw they- Wu-Tang at Red Rocks a couple years back, and... It was for a Halloween show. It was cold as fuck. <laughs> Dude, and you can always bank that you get beautiful Octobers in Colorado, but 36 hours for Halloween, it turns ass cold. Yes, Guaranteed indeed. every every year. Every year. Global warming, doesn't matter. It's Halloween, matter. which titties own. Every year. I mean, it'll be 80 degrees the next day. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, it it uh, reminds me of that uh, that climate paper I read by uh, Yushid Bragyov. You should what? You should brag y'all. You should brag you off some of these nuts. That's what. <laughs> I knew what the setup was gonna lead to. <laughs> but it 
whatever. That was whack. <laughs> Okay, that wasn't even. Nah, that's that's you ain't fresh. What what, what, what about hey, uh, your girl Ginger Lee called me the other day. I, man, I'm not falling for that. When, so I worked briefly at a Safeway, and I got so bad with it, people would not answer my questions, even if it was work related. I go, hey, how you doing? And they'd stop, and their eyes would narrow because they're looking for the setup. I hit them every which way. Hey, did you hear about the new count? The new what? Count these nuts. Hey, did they tell you about the new checkout? No. <laughs> Check out all day. You going too basic. I brought you that lunch, B. What lunch was that? My sack lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and now, special segment. True hip hop stories from Dow Jones. So true you... hip hop stories. I got plenty. <laughs> yeah, so um we were talking about so Dow used to be part of a really good five-man underground group in Denver called Ground Zero Movement. It was bullshit, man. It wasn't that good. <laughs> I didn't say it. I mean, some cats thought it was good or whatever. We put out a bunch of shit that was like, wasn't... I didn't feel like it was uh, marinated enough a lot of times. She got rushed to the studio yep. too much. Oh, Speaking of rush too much, I came up with a roast the other day. I'm just waiting to drop on somebody. But it has to be for another Gen, Gen Xer. And it's, your birth was the original tweet that got zero likes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping in the middle with my bullshit. So, so Dow was just telling us about the night he opened up for Digital Underground and had an interesting uh, interaction with Shock G, a.k.a. Humpty Hump, rest in peace. Rest in peace. But no, I mean, we were um, doing a tour with uh, Digital Underground, like kind of a mountain tour. So we did a bunch of the ski towns and everything, Breckenridge, Vail, you know, all of that. And then we came like through to the metro area, did a show downtown, and then went up in Fort Collins, like somewhere around on the CU, CSU campus. And, uh, you know, Shock G, you know, he got it kind of bad, like later on in the night and everything. Like he, we, he had finished performing we were kind of partying and everything and we couldn't find anyone with, uh, you know, what he was looking for, which was kind of like that Tony Montana kind of a, a coveted item that needs no description. Right. So he was kind of, you know, upset about that. But then while he was in, you know, flustered, kind of looking for somebody that could provide this substance, uh, one of these college kids up there at CSU Snatched his nose, the the Humpty famous nose and glasses. What, now this, when you told the, sorry to interrupt you, but didn't he have an auxiliary? Um, he went on tour with one fucking nose. He did have one. Okay. Yes, one okay. set. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so he desperately needed that nose to continue the rest of the tour. We couldn't find it anywhere, and plus that was probably had like some kind of, you know, lucky value or something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You probably get attached to the. Your little charm things on the road, right? Right. Um, so by the end of the night, he was <laughs> he was balled up crying, like in the corner, because we could not find the nose and couldn't find whatever else. You could, you could, couldn't, couldn't find, find the Couldn't find the powdered sugar. <laughs> couldn't find the nose or anything to put in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing before we go, and I don't know whether this ends up. So my friend, the JK, has a brilliant newsletter. I don't care... If you're into I Ching or tarot or divination or not, you'll appreciate the thoughtfulness and the writing. I don't follow many of his beliefs nor his practices, but I appreciate the care and the wisdom and the thought. It's called Me Being Serious. It's a monthly newsletter where he rounds up not only his favorite tweets and does some pretty good observational one-liners, but also shares with you the way he reads the I Ching currents. So the Me Being Serious you should subs you should subscribe to it i do